Hey John here again. So I got this uh, snowmobile trailer, this uh, cl clamshell enclosed deal. Uh, does good for the snowmobiles, but uh, you know this is a 2005. Uh, this trailer, I forgot how much it costs, but price on a new trailer to carry a uh, side by side. Uh, it's just out of the question nowadays. So I'm thinking about making this uh, back into a flatbed, but I also want to have this clamshell, you know being able to remove it and put it on anytime I like so this thing is heavier than you think it's not going to be uh, even you know one person no way could lift this by himself uh, even two people would be very problematic uh, maybe four people could lift it I don't know I know it's heavy but uh, I'm going to make a contraption that uh, I can uh, take this on and off and leave it on the contraption and uh, have it be you know to be able to roll it around and move it around wherever I need to and uh, this way I can have the snowmobiles under cover in the winter and the uh, flatbed, you know, for, for whatever reason, if, if you know, a flatbed trailer, in my case, I'm going to use it for a side-by-side, -side, but I mean, even if you're going to a big box store to pick up, uh, I don't know, some supplies or whatever, it's good to have a flatbed. So anyways, uh, I got a couple ideas on what I'm going to do. Uh, so these Mamma Jammas came out of a dumpster from a warehouse that they're changing over to racks little racks like you see at Home Depot and a lot and uh, pretty heavy duty stuff but I'm going to make this as the base uh, just a, a U base and I'll chop these up and uh, you know get started somewhere all right so we have a start I'll use the uh, thicker stuff for the for the rear and uh, the three inch channel for the sides I need to know how long that that back piece is going to be and taking consideration these uh, these side pieces over here so the trailer is uh, 102 inches wide right but the, this back piece here uh, is going to be 102 plus the width of that I think they're an inch and a half so that's three inches there plus I want to go another inch just so you know if the trailer is like this I want to be able to fork around it So the next next uh, step I want to do is uh, just monkeying around with this. So I bought these casters. Uh, I didn't want to spend any money on this, but I didn't have any caster wheels, and I need casters for the rear. And these uh, things are we, the things we cut off. So I'm going to use them, and uh, I'm going to do two casters on the rear piece. And we'll we'll put it on here somewhere. It's probably probably one here. Stick it up. One down there. Stick it up. So we got that uh, fried on there. So I'm kind of debating on what to do here. So this is going to be the back piece. This is a three inch channel with the uh, casters on it, or four inch channel, whatever it is. Um, so I want something to be able to pull it. I got these, these scrap pieces here. So I'm thinking about doing something like this. Maybe welding these on like this. And then uh, it's just gas pipe. Then having, you know, for a tongue. It just happens, these holes were already there, but it just happens to be this half inch or five inch, five eighths. And then uh, from there, we can do like, you know, blow some holes in this, so to, you know, feed through this. And then this way, this this will go up and down, so I can uh, have a handle or something, or handles to pull this manually, but also have a little tongue there for, I don't know, a hitch tongue or even a lawnmower tongue with just a tab. I'll figure that out later, but. All right, so something like this, uh, I'd, you know, I just uh, put the uh, flanges on, so let me clean, uh, this is the uh, second, well, the, yeah, the second, uh, there's one over there against the tree. So I got the two long pieces, or the one back piece and the two side pieces, so I'm just going to throw a little uh, primer on there over those welds, just don't rust. All right, so we got the uh, the two legs on, I don't know if you call them legs, the side pieces, and uh, they're about as straight as I can get them going across. I don't have nothing big enough to uh, stretch across there to check for a level, but by eye, I mean, let's face it, this thing's built by hand and it's uh, all by eye, so. <laughs> so I gotta get the rear casters on and then we can figure out what kind of drop down I need for uh, the front wheels. 
that. So I got enough, uh, enough of that four inch channel to do some uh, downspouts, right, for the wheels. All right, so the axle, you know, we'll have to find a spot wherever it's going to be welded like this, but you see it's, it can go wonky on you. So I have to uh, make sure that's straight. Just going to weld uh, a big nut on there and then put the washer like this, right? So now that hub will sit on here. All right, so that's a permanent deal there. It's welded on. <laughs> It ain't coming off, so hopefully the wheel height is right. It doesn't matter if it's up an inch down, an inch, whatever. Ah, so it rolls, and it, uh, it's portable now, but uh, see this uh, span here, so I can flex these in and out. So it's 106 and a half, I think, but uh, I can flex these in and out for a good three, four inches. So, And they're also, uh, because it's so long, can tweak this way and that way. So I guess the next move is to add a 45 degree uh, you know, bar this way across on both sides, and that'll stiffen them sides up, and and we'll get it to where everything's perpendicular. All right, so this thing rolls around extremely easy. Um, so I, I got it under there. It's more squirted towards. There. I just want to see if it cleared. You know, to go underneath the trailer because my measurements were, you know, on undulating driveway here. So I've got an inch, or a couple inches probably, to spare. So we will drive right under here. The front went under, no problem. If you have to, but again, there's going to be some. Uh, well, I'll take it away. So it will clear. You know, I can go under it and it's sticking out here a bit. But uh, so when you align this thing, right? So we're going to have some uprights coming off of here. Those are those uh, the three-inch channels. So I'm going to plug them into here and come up. Let me open this. I'll show you. Show you what my intentions are. So you see what a shock is, right? So I want to have these uprights coming up to here. And then having it uh, on an articulating, you know, a rotating, so that it'll grab it here at a 45 or whatever angle this is, and then, but it'll be on a uh, a rotator. Uh, you know, I'm going to do it on a piece of pipe or some. I got some ideas. Uh, so I just got a bar laid across there. That's about as far as I can go before it hits the uh, trailer wheel. Well, about uh, I don't know five inches before it hits the trailer wheel, and I don't think uh, this is a 45 degree angle here. And I don't really care, actually. Um, whatever this angle is, I'm going to just trace a line underneath both sides. And then uh, just go over to the saw and set my uh, my angle device up to match the uh, line. So... So I got a couple uprights just clamped on there. And uh, that's about where, you know, this is what I'm talking about. This... Uh, so the, the pipe is going to go through here with the with the flexible or the uh, rotating flange that's going to catch that. I'm just uh, putting that there to see if it cleared and everything, and it does. Uh, so that pipe over there on the saw is an inch and three quarters. So we're going to blow a hole an inch and three quarters, right? All right. So I'm uh, just grinding these, uh, the, repurposing these uh, flanges here. I'll grind the welds off. Just grind the weld off there. And what I'm thinking is doing like this, uh, this uh, pipe, right, will be welded on here, like that. So this will be the flange, we'll weld this guy right there, probably do something like this where, once we get these pipes, but you, the flange will be on the end there, right, and we'll rotate it, uh, but you can see how there's a little bit of play. So I think what I'm going to do is, these need to be even. I'll add a cap on this, and then a, a set screw, just to cinch it down. Alright, sweet. So uh, this is the uh, rotating part, right? And uh, I'm going to have to time this up. Put some paint on it so it don't rust, but, and then this is just a little holder. So when it's, uh, you know, when we're, when we're putting it in the, uh, in the trailer, I mean, uh, you know, pulling up to it, this ain't going to stick out. That came out pretty good. Uh, again, I got to put my set bolt up here. I got to blow a hole in here and weld a nut, and then have a uh, uh, you know a way to. As you can see, it's, it's a little sloppy here, right? But some, when we're on our uh, 
trailer, wherever it is. We'll just uh, tighten the bolt down and it'll push down on this. You got you got what I'm saying, it'll tighten it up. So anyways, that's where we're at. Let's get this thing on the uh, I guess next step is weld this whole piece onto the trailer. Alright, so we got the uh, the uprights done and uh, still gotta put the wheel on there, but we're gonna drive it under here and figure out where the rear upright needs to be and I don't know if I'm going to do a, a dual upright or a single I haven't figured that out yet but uh, so these these two fellas are adjustable in and out for the plate you know for the sides of the trailer and uh, they also uh, flip as we saw uh, to, to take in consideration you know when the clamshell is up we need to clamp it on and then we need to you know you'll see how this all plays out once I get uh, things figured out all right, so I just rolled it under there. I'll try to hold her steady so you don't puke. But uh, as you can see here, this angle is because of the front landing gear. It's jacked up. Um, but, and now I'm thinking, this has flexibility, right? Because there's nothing here yet. And I got to think about that because rolling it under here, uh, and you, there's also undulating where the axle on this trailer is, obviously, there's a, a, a wider gap from here, but that's just because of the property. It's just a gravel driveway. It's probably sitting in a hole. But, um, because, now you see how this is a little closer? I like that there's flexibility so I can, you know, literally take this and, and flex it out to where I need to be. So when we raise this and we put our little shelves in and clamp everything, that's going to, you know, make everything rigid however I do need to uh, again this is all trial and error but well let's raise this and see what uh, see what it looks like <laughs> okay so we just drove around there and uh, they're about so this one's about a inch and a half higher than uh, maybe an inch higher than that one they're both not touching but because of the undulating ground not worried about that because we can clamp this up you know to, to, to wherever we need to but here's the first learning curve is uh, <laughs> we can't tighten this. So what I'm going to do is uh, because we can tighten this down to where it's just scraping this, you're just touching this, and then it's just a matter of a quarter quarter of a turn. But obviously uh, I didn't take in consideration this was going to be this close. So I'll probably just end up uh, chopping one end off, and before you put it in, you just you know set it to where it's just scraping and then it's just going to be a, a quarter turn to tighten it you know. oh so one other thing i just backed it off a little bit but uh one other thing was uh the reason why we have to make a holder and not just have this uh you know in there not like a permanent deal because it, it still needs to rotate is because we can't get by this fella right so when we're plugging this thing in that's why this uh thing has to come out when we're rolling it in that's how close the tolerance is so that's why this can't be there um, I don't know if I pointed that out but let's clip this piece off all right so it turns out the beauty of this is uh, you see how close it is here right and uh, if we loosen this up we can actually uh, flex this guy out right oh, I don't know if we saw that and we can uh, you know pop this guy in or out or whatever we need to do the reason I'm pointing this out is uh, because over here on the other side, let's tighten that up. So it's it's touching here, and we get uh, plenty of plenty of space to catch whatever. But going on the other side, because uh, if you don't pull this thing in exactly, you know, straight, really doesn't matter. You see how much clearance we have here. Uh, so when we loosen this, you know what I mean. So wherever we need to be here. Just uh, even if we want to pop it out, pop it in, everything's adjustable. So I likes. I didn't clamp this. Originally, I was going to just clamp this this piece to the trailer, but I just want to try this out without being clamped, uh, and try to release this and just see what happens. Right? Just because uh, I want no tools necessary to take this thing off. So let's try to release this and see what happens. Alright, so this is just going to go way wrong, or 
I can see it's corroded on there. I'm going to try to pry this off and having this, uh, you know, clamshell propped with this, with no clamps. We'll see what happens, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to order some new ones anyway, because these are, these are rusted, corroded. I don't even know if they're going to come off. They just pop right off of there. Oh, I think it's moving. All right, watch your fingers. Wow, so that worked out pretty good. Uh, I got the props undone, they're just dangling. And I undid the front two uh, hinge pins there. I had to cut that wire, I got to cut another wire on the other side. Uh, but it's just uh, cinched down with the handles here. It's locked in place, not locked in place, it's just you know cinched down. But I could still move the thing. I gotta go cut that wire. Uh, I don't know, I just got lucky I guess with the balancing point right there. I suppose the lower I go, it's going to get more heavier towards the end, but I'm going to cut that wire and see, see see if this thing will balance in the middle like that. That's crazy. That's crazy. So it's where I can literally take this trailer out right now, and I'm probably going to. Uh, and I don't have any rear, <laughs> rear, uh, you know, no point of contact here. It's just the two uprights that are holding this thing up. So let me see what happens here. Wow, that is bonkers. So this thing's light enough. I got tension on the screw there, but it's uh, it's it's an assist i have no contact just between these two so <laughs> that's bonkers man that that just the two uprights are holding this thing and it's a little bit windy out so I'm a little bit nervous but uh, so now I can get this where the thing is base I need to jack it up a little more where it's level and then see where that where I can uh, connect that rod and it'll just be a I might have to go backwards this way I don't know probably makes more sense to go so you know connect it back here somewhere but let me uh, let me think on this and work on this and I can literally once I get that secure drag this trailer out of there no problem uh, but here's what I'm gonna come up with so taking this this thing off from, uh, it'll be right here, you know, we take the prop off. I am going to swing it back this way and do something like this. Just have an upright with uh, some more of this scrap. Well, it's all scrap. But then uh, just weld a play down here somewhere, right? And put one of those little balls to catch this. Something like this. All right. That ball will go there. And then uh, I'm going to put this, I'm going to weld this like this, whichever way it doesn't matter, and have the ball on the inside because we don't want to have that trailer snag it on the way in, right? And then that'll transfer the prop to here. All right, so I got a couple of them uh, uprights uh, cut out and uh, prepped to weld them in. I'm just going to go ahead and start. That was the one with the ball on it. Just going to go and make a little fence railing kind of thing where you know when this clamshell comes down it's gonna sit well it's hard to explain uh, you'll see in a second I'll put everything together and uh, weld a few things out. I'll do one side and then we'll get the other picture <laughs> so we got her all welded up this corner here or this uh, this part and uh, some people might be thinking well That's a little overkill with all these angles and stuff, but and yeah, it is but I like overkill That's the new guy Thinks he's helping It's just in a way a little loafer <laughs> That's the OG just Trying to stay out of the way. Mr. Quiet. All right. I got all my gussets on I'm running out of gas here to so many damn wells, but now I want to do this tongue here. Uh, so I just want to basically have a tongue. I, I got some uh, gas pipe here uh, from threaded gas pipe, black pipe. I think it's a half inch. It fits through them holes there. So then I'm just going to use uh, uh, some of the scrap metal left of the red flanges we cut off and make a, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm just going to do it rather than explain it. Just Whatever 
this thing is. This is a, a chef from a, a weed whacker. Look, it's perfect. No play. Perfect fit. And my bar fits into here. Perfect fit. All right, so this is what we come up with. So I just cut this, uh, whatever diameter this is, the, the weed whacker tube, right? So it fits in there. And it fits perfectly in these holes. So we're just going to go like this. Nice tight fit. All right. And we'll shove this uh, lead pipe in. It's full of grease. I don't know. This is shaft had grease in it. We'll send it through like this. All right. And then we'll, uh, it's too bad it has grease in it. We'll do some kind of cotter pin with a washer or something. So then, you see these, these will be the tongue, right? Be able to uh, rotate it out of the way. And if you want to tow, you can tow. Right? Of course, we'll have to, you know, make a measurement, whoever this is, and then add the uh, tongue that way. Alright, so we got all the pieces cut up for the tongue. Uh, I know it doesn't look like a tongue, but in about uh, two seconds it will. Let me put that together for you, show, it, show what that looks like, and we'll put it up there. And it's about a 30 inch tongue, which is going to be uh, good enough when I pull it with my tractor. It'll be enough turning radius. Alright, poof, there we have it. Um, so I added some uh, pull handles, you know, grab handles, and of course the mount for the tractor to pull it. And uh, I added a nut on this end of that uh, black pipe there because this end's threaded So I'm going to get one of those uh, Caps for the other end so we can take this on and off anytime I want. Let me, let me put it on. I'll show you how it goes There's a spacer right? And then I uh, wish this wasn't hot. I could do it better And then we have this piece which is extremely hot. I just finished. Oh, might have to get some gloves um, right, go like this. Yeah, I gotta do some gloves because I can't touch this other end there. <laughs> and goes up and down, folds in. Sweet, right? All right. So the whole reason uh, we didn't weld it, you know, straight out, is because uh, you know I want this out of the way. If you're gonna walk around this thing, you don't want to be, uh, you know, like a trip hazard. As far as uh, you know, this this thing is just gonna be. A tongue to tow it, Mister. Just a tongue to tow it, right? Or push it, or pull it, or, or you know whatever you got to do to maneuver it. But it's also gonna tow. All right, so I got her outdoors and uh, about to throw throw some primer on here and paint this up. But uh, before I do, I wanted to just go around uh, every bottom spout and just uh, poke some weep holes in here, just because uh, of the water. So we got uh, got primed up, and uh, let's throw a coat of flat black on there. Ah, right, so we threw a coat of uh, flat black on there. Same thing with the tongue there. I was gonna do some red, and then do some ears with ribbon. You know what? I'm I'm gonna do everything flat black because uh, I'm gonna put this stuff on it. This uh, powerful protection, this uh, fluid foam black, uh, just because it's gonna be outdoors all day. Uh, so once I get everything together, I'm gonna spray the whole thing. Uh, you know, you know, because it's gonna it's gonna live outdoors, uh, undercoating protection just everywhere. But anyways, uh, like I said before, because the the C channels were all powder coated to begin with, and the actual uh, bars were uh, galvanized, uh, it's just really where I ground down to do welds that's uh, got a potential of rusting. So throwing the paint on there, and then this uh, undercoating, uh, you know, fluid film stuff, it's not gonna. So anyways, that's where I'm at. I'm going to put the wheels on a second, get this thing, because we've got some thunderstorms coming, get this thing inside, and uh, and then uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to go ahead and see if that booger actually works and takes that uh, that cap off. No problem. All right, so we've got the wheels on it, the handles on it. Let's get busy here. Uh, let me set this camera up so we can just uh, roll it under there, and in five minutes, that's my plan to take this top off. All right, so i uh, got the cap open, but... Uh, I think I pointed out before up in the corner there, I got lights on the top of the clamshell, you know, clearance lights and some uh, interior lights. 
and uh, I just got the wires clipped for now but how I'm going to deal with that because I need something quick release is just use one of these uh, trailer connections and we'll just wire the cap and uh, the flatbed separate and then you know when we take it apart it's just a matter of unclipping and then when we put it back together boom we have uh, light integrity so that's what I'm going to do with that I'm just uh, not going to do it right now because I want to get this cap off All right, so these side pieces, and again, this is where this flexibility is gonna come into play. So we're just gonna feed it through this way, right? And this is our uh, pivot point, but I want this uh, shovel, I want I want to push this, uh, this, you know, this whole mechanism in further. I'm just kind of showing you right now about how this thing works. And then because, because this upright is flexible, I should have left the handle on there, I could have, but anyways, uh, see now we tighten this up and it won't move, but we'll leave it uh, flexible for right now, actually right there, so it's still flexible and then it's just a quarter turn, it's, it's done, uh, but I want to push it up a little bit, so. So this is what that clip looks like, um, like I said, these shocks, these props are uh, getting replaced, they're pretty old, but getting these out are pretty simple when they're cooperating, but sometimes, as you can see, they're a little corroded, um, but I got, I ordered five, they're like 22 cents a piece so I ordered a bunch of these because um, uh, well they're good to have and you need them because otherwise if you don't have them on there yeah they sit on the socket but one day they're going to pop off and then you won't be able to get that trailer up it'll fall at an inconvenient time but anyways uh, so uh, popping this off as you can see I don't know if you can see or not um, there's a a little bit of a I'd say an inch maybe so like I said popping these off it's going to it's going to sit it's going to sit down, but because we got the front secured, like I was saying on the other side, who cares, right? So you don't even need to hold it here. I guess I would, but I'll just show you for, we'll take them off and we'll just let it slam. That's how heavy that trailer is. Well, because it's on the uh, uh, front hinges, got to leave them first. Now we're all set to take off the front hinges, but before we do that, let's see what I'm looking at here. Before we do that, we're going to have to crank these down to lock them in position for a sec, right? It's sitting on the plate. It doesn't look like it, but it is. So I locked that in position, so now it can't tilt. Let's do the other side. All right, this one, lock her in. So it's not going anywhere right now. And now, for added safety measures, we're going to... Um, put a clamp on there. Let's do it in front here. Alright. And now that that's clamped, we can uh, take the forward hinges pin pins off. Let me go clamp the other side. I just don't want it to slide. Uh, even though it's pinched, uh, if there's a potential to slide, so that's, uh, you know, putting them uh, clamps on there. Let me show you on the other side. All right, so I've already taken the, uh, the inside bolt off. And now uh, there's a nut in here, at least on mine. Yours might be a little different, but that I want to hold. And then I can take this off. This didn't really move very much because it's uh, stuck on the, uh, I'll show you in a second, but that's the one side. Let's, let's go do the other side. All right, both of them are free. And uh, like I said, see how it just dropped a little bit? But there's so much flexibility that when we go to put this back together, 
we can uh, aim it and, and, and guide it wherever we need to. Um, especially because everything's on uh, on wheels there. But everything's locked into place right now. And uh, this is the part I want to show you. That, that just came out just by luck. Hold on a second. Okay, as it stands right now, we've got the two... Uh, uh oh, here comes the mutts. We've got the two uh, pivot points out. And this is the only thing holding it. This upright is the only thing holding this clamshell up in the air. Uh, right now, those uh, those are locked in a quarter turn, and it's holding it in the position. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this on a windy day, but uh, having those props just dangling there, this is why originally I was going to put the prop over here. Uh, I just don't because it just happened to be right above this, uh, you know, where this pivot point is, the highest part of this trailer just beyond it. It just happened happened to work out just perfect. It's a bolster. And... Uh, which Clyde and uh, so when, uh, right now I can pull this trailer right out but what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna loosen these up and it's gonna hold it you're gonna see this is gonna be uh, like I said this is the best part of it uh, I'm gonna loosen them up and you'll see that the balance on this I can use one finger to lower this to clamp it here it's not heavy at all you can use one finger to lift it up one finger to put it down it's pretty cool yeah. Is that cool or what? Just loosen them up here, and you can use that. Uh, you can use that to kind of, if it gets too heavy, just cinch it back down. It'll it'll give it more resistance. But and that's it. Now the thing is just uh, completely on the trailer, and we can clamp it to any one of these uh, uh, bars, or just leave it like that. I'm sure it'll be fine. Gravity. <laughs> All right, so that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Uh, so I did add a strap on the uprights, the two uprights. It's just dangling now, but when you're transporting it, uh, the uprights kind of want to sway a little bit, uh, just to be sure. Like I said, I, I, I just put a strap around them, cinched it up a little bit to to help keeping it, you know, push pull method. But uh, I did. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, anyways. The the, the actual clamshell is kind of keeping it locked in. That's what I ended up doing. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully, uh, this this will last for a bit. I'm gonna, like I said before, I'm gonna kind of shed it up with uh, some fluid film because it's gonna remain outdoors, and I do have to do some repairs to that uh, clamshell, obviously. But but hey, now I got a uh, a flatbed, right? The flatbed is uh, gonna be uh, crucial. I mean, having a flatbed that's 10 foot by 8 foot. You can use it for a lot of things. And to have this thing come on and off in five minutes is uh, going to be golden. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.